Hi, thanks for joining me for this conversation with James Rothwell, the former VP of Marketing for Comcast Advertising. This video is a little longer, so I want to give you a sense for what some of the issues are that we cover in this video. The first is the relative importance of different types of videos. We hit the player, the size, the format. We get into what is the difference between connected TV and linear TV. We talk about the importance of matching the video ads to the environment that we be shown in and how to sequence the video ads. And then close with why video ads aren't just another digital format and touch on some of the evolving trends. I hope you enjoy this conversation with James Rothwell. Hi, I'm here with James Rothwell. James is the former head of marketing for Comcast Advertising. He's also formerly from Freewheel and Microsoft. We're going to be talking today about some of the nuances of the video advertising space. James, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, James. Great to be here. Excellent. Uh, you know, you and I had talked about this and I said, let's do one on five things that advertisers get wrong about advertising. And you said, look, let's just talk about the nuance. So let's get into the nuance. I wanted to keep um, it positive, upbeat, you know. Uh, exactly. On a positive note rather than a negative note. So here, let's, let's start with not all video is created equal. There are differences between large player and small player. So when we think about those differences, short form, user generated videos, YouTube, social media, long form professional versus TV, how do you think about that spectrum within the video advertising space? Yeah, I mean, it is a complex space, right? And uh, the differences between uh, short form user generated content uh, versus what we typically call or historically called television, um, are vast. Um, you know the the way in which they're traded, the way in which they're operated, uh, the rights associated with each of those things are incredibly different, um, and that results in a very different way of buying them, buying advertising on on those in those environments, a very different way of measuring them. Um, but the rea the reality is, I think television is becoming a lot more digital centric, a lot more like digital. Uh, and the way that data and technology is advancing in that space um, and the way in which the linear, uh, the historical linear um, uh, part of this, of that, uh, of the industry and the CTV and streaming part of the industry are starting to look a lot more similar. So I think, you know, generally speaking, those worlds are combining and, and colliding a little bit. Um, but there still remains very distinct differences between a you know 30 second video of a, of a dog on a skateboard uh, to a 60 minute um, you know professionally produced program that has a whole bunch of rights distribution um, and talent associated with it that um, that needs to be somehow uh, re reconciled from an economic perspective. Okay, just while we're on this, because we're going to have people hopefully watching who aren't as familiar with the video space, and you just used two terms that I want, I'm going to have you define, please. One was linear TV, and one is CTV. And you, you're thinking about some of the differences. Let, let, can you define those, please? Yeah, I should have done that. Uh, linear is um, the historical way that we watch television up until um, pretty recently. Um, it's usually through either a cable box or a satellite dish. Uh, and is the way in which most Americans uh, watch their, their, their television up until pretty recently. Um, CTV, which always connected TV, you'll also hear the term OTT is a similar uh, corollary. Um, CTV is streaming. Um, it's a connected device um, either into the television or the television enabled um, apps where you're able to um, deliver content through um, through digi a digital um, signal. Um, so those worlds are very much merging. Like I said before, you know, I have an Xfinity X1 box, which has both apps and that linear feed, and I can switch simultaneously. A lot of people have obviously cut the cord and only stream uh, content today. There's virtual MVPDs, which is another term, um, which we won't, which we'll talk about, but that's kind of another way of getting your um, uh, content through something like a YouTube TV, for example. Um, so lots of acronyms, like many industries and, and many parts of the ad, ad space, uh, but those are the two sort of differences. 
Got it. Now let, let's talk. You use the phrase, you know, people buy those very differently. If they're buying on YouTube, they might buy in a different way than traditional long form. One of the dimensions is just the ads can be different. You have six second or 15 second ads in sort of, you know, you know, online type environments or within an app. You tend to have the traditional 30 second or minute long ads within traditional linear TV. And so when you think about from a buyer perspective, one dimension is the length of time. But what are the other dimensions that a buyer tends to think about or should be thinking about when they're going through creating a campaign and thinking about where it needs to be placed yeah i mean the reality is because of the way that audiences are di distributed now you have to be able to sort of um buy in all those different places and have a creative strategy and creative executions that can um, reach all of those different audiences in all those different environments so it's important for buyers and 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 uh, uh brands to be thinking about how can i um, have a, a set of creatives that will match the environment in, in, in the best possible way. Um, so, you know, with a six second ad, you've got to get to the punchline pretty quickly. Um, there's also attention associated, uh, attention metrics associated with these environments where maybe your attention isn't quite as strong in a, in a more of a social media type of environment where you're scrolling through a feed or you're there to watch a particular short, you know, short, uh, form video, uh, and you're not interested in sitting through a 30 second ad for a 30 second video. Um, so there's, there's kind of implications for getting the right type of ad, or the right length of ad in there, like you said, but also ensuring that the creative execution within that um, matches the environment in terms of attention. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're um, running a 30 second ad against a, um, a piece of professionally produced content in a TV show, um, you know, most people will just adjust, have the same ad uh, running on both their linear as well as their CTV campaign because effectively you're in the same environment. Generally speaking, you're watching that on a big screen in your living room. Sometimes, obviously, you'll be watching it on a mobile mobile screen or in, um, you know uh, in an out of home situation. But um, but for the most part, um, you know CTV and linear TV ads will will kind of be look very similar. Um, now. There are interactive elements now so uh, enabled uh, in the TV environment. Um, that can be through, again, your set-top box and your remote. Um, and or, you know, if you're watching, let's say, a streaming uh, program on your on your uh, laptop, uh, you might be able to click on something to be able to actually um, respond in some way to uh, to that ad beyond just watching the ad. So um, lots of different ways and, again, evolving ways in which TV advertising, video advertising, it, is is sort of becoming more digital, more interactive, um, and and so it's not easy to to come up with a holistic strategy there. But I think what's what's good, what's positive, is that buyers have so many more options and and uh, uh, you know um, tools to be able to reach their audience in in compelling ways now. Okay, Let, let's stay with the sort of comparison between linear long form and, and a more connected environment, and talk about sort of the timing of ads. In a traditional environment, you'd have an ad pod on TV. You might have four or six ads during that. As you say, they might be in a certain order. Things get more complicated online. You've got mid-roll, pre-roll. Your ads can appear in different ways. They may or may not be as sort of an ad pod. If you're a buyer thinking about the questions that you should be asking of publishers or of the ad networks that you're buying from, how do you think about those sort of discussions around the timing of where the ads are appearing? Yeah, I think a lot of this comes down to technology um, and the ability for you know either the ad decision uh, engine or the ad server to be able to choreograph um, those different um, ads and the, and the different ways in which those they're delivered. Obviously, well, the other biggest challenge, and, and this comes back to the rights piece that I talked about at the beginning, um, you know, whether it's the programmer that has the rights, the distributor has the rights, um, there may be kind of conflict there, right? Uh, maybe you, you have kind of two different sales channels. Uh, that's the other piece of this. It could be a, a direct sales channel, so um, the, the content owner has sold it, or they're using a programmatic partner to fill that, um, that, that part as well. 
um, you got to make sure that there's separation, there's competitive separation. So I'm not running a Coke ad next to a Pepsi ad or running a, a Toyota ad next to a, a Honda ad. Um, so there's a lot of technology that goes into all of that um, to be able to enable, um, you know, that 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 pod to be sort of compliant with a brand's uh, requirements and obviously meet the needs of the contracts that they've signed with the with the content owner or the distributor who's selling the ads. Typically in the linear space, that, that kind of bifurcation between content owner and distributor was very clean. Um, the content owner, the programmer in this case, had, had kind of effectively the national uh, sales channel and the distributor had the local sales channel. In the digital space, it gets a bit more complicated where it's not quite as clean as that. And so again, no, the ad server and the ad technology needs to know what ads have been served prior and preferably even in advance of the pod running to be able to make the right, the smartest decision and a decision that's going to basically make, keep the, the brand and the marketer happy because their ad showed up in the right place and not next to uh, a, a competitor. Um, so it's complicated. Um, but it's as a brand and a, and a marketer, you want to be asking those questions. How are you able to uh, manage the choreography of advertising? Um, you know, what are the what are the ways in which you can ensure that my ad is going to show up in the right way? Let, let, let's talk about how the buying actually occurs, because in some respects, um, video online ad buying has some of the holdovers from TV, so things like upfronts, and it also has some of the things from traditional display or banner advertising that has moved very much programmatic. And so when you think about the different pressures or the, or the ways in which buyers and sellers interact in this space, how do you think about the sort of online video ad space around those artifacts? Yeah, it's really interesting, uh, you know, because I think, as you as you look at the upfront model, which is typically an annual um, annual rhythm of where where the TV networks used to go to the agencies and say, here are all the, here's all the new programming that we're going to have next year, along with the programming that we're going to keep running um, because it's it's going so well. Um, what are what are your goals? You match those goals to the GRPs or the uh, the gross rating points uh, that are associated with those audiences that typically watch those shows. That's the way the upfront model works and has worked for decades. Um, now you add in CTV. Now you add in addressable TV, which is where you're able to actually uh, run household-based advertising to certain audiences. Um, and it, and the, the math and the spreadsheets get a lot more complicated because all, all of a sudden you're now trying to sort of work off of different metrics, different trading models, different execution technologies to be able to deliver on those audiences. Um, so it becomes a lot more complicated, um, but it also opens up opportunities for new advertisers and new ways in which you can access inventory uh, and new ways for publishers to monetize that inventory as well. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a world where I think the buyers and sellers are moving through it together um, hopefully incentivized to make the consumer experience a, a better one. Uh, but it's, at, at times, you know, those, those sort of trading mechanisms and ultimately the execution of those ads does, does make it a lot more complicated. Now, programmatic is definitely a much bigger part of the equation. And again, it's getting fed into that more of that upfront or that kind of annual commitment that, that agencies um, uh, and brands are going to want to make uh, to, get, to get preferred rates. Um, those are done through more private marketplaces, um, which enable um, advertisers to sort of be able to kind of pick the audiences they want, but publishers to, re to, to retain the control they need to make sure that, um, that, that that experience for the consumer, the viewer, is, is, is kept intact. So it's a, it's a very complicated sort of equation that needs to get resolved between the buyer and the seller. Uh, the upfront season for me seems to kind of extend later and later into the summer every year. Um, it was usually something that was done and dusted by kind of June um, after the May upfronts. Now it seems to extend all the way into kind of the fall season of September and people are still figuring it all out. But, um, you know, what I think is what is what's really interesting is kind of the, the advent of things like addressable TV um, to be able to sort of 
bring those and, and, and programmatic and bring those into the upfront um, sort of conversations because because uh, then again you get that sort of efficiency around commitments uh, pricing um, but also the kind of the dynamic um, ability of, of of reaching targeted audiences in a in a much more efficient way got it now one of the things that one of the lines are blurring and of course all all lines are blurring in, in this space but you know some people might take the position that video is just another digital format just you know you might have your native ads as one format traditional display and now a lot of the display ads are running rich media within them they're becoming more video like if you will now they may still be in a small placement they may still be on a pc over on the side of the computer not taking up the full screen so from your perspective when you've interacted with video buyers what are they looking for from a publisher if a publisher is going to represent something as video what are sort of the key attributes for them to feel comfortable that they're getting a video like experience yeah I mean, obviously we come back to environment right how how engaged is that that consumer, that viewer in that environment, um, because if they're scrolling through a feed, typically they're not going to stop, even however good the, cre the creative or the rich media execution is. Um, so attention, engagement becomes really, really important. Um, you know, I think obviously content generally sort of speaks for itself when you're talking about premium TV. Um, you know, you, you don't need to necessarily have that conversation. If you're talking about more display, or more sort of um, text-based content um, or imagery that sort of um, maybe looks again a little bit more like social media, um, you know, then then it's a different it's a different conversation. You also have to think about kind of the quality aspects of um, of that the delivery of those advertising um, uh, placements, right? So again, in a in a TV or premium uh, kind of CTV environment, you're likely to be showing ads kind of in the pre-roll, the mid-roll. Um, and there's ad pods and there's kind of ways in which, you know, you can control that, that, that delivery pretty, pretty easily. And, you know, with a great deal of confidence that, that there's going to be levels of, of engagement and attention there because people have opted in to watch that show or watch that piece of content. Uh, in other environments, maybe that might not be the case. There's other sort of nefarious elements like um, fraud that you have to be aware of, right, and, and ensuring that um, you know, if you're not using a verification com uh, software or some kind of, um, you know, technology to be able to ensure that the ad that was supposedly delivered actually delivered to a human being and was seen for more than a few seconds, um, you know, that's a really, really important part of it. So the, I would say kind of the, the quality of both the environment and the ad execution or the ad sort of delivery, um, those two aspects need to be verified, need to be ensure um, because because without those you're not you're just not going to have success. So we've talked a lot about what is the advertiser or the agency sort of asking for when they're asking for video ads. A lot of my questions have been around that dimension. Yeah. I, I wanted to try to put a publisher hat on in terms of well, what should a publisher be thinking about? And to some extent, it may just be a laundry list of all the things we talked through. In that they need to be responsive to the advertiser. They need to ensure the, the content is engaging. They need to ensure it's large. They need to ensure they have fraud mechanisms in place. I guess one thing we didn't talk about is measurement. Uh, is there anything that's different about video in terms of how a publisher should be measuring it and passing on information? If the answer is no, that's fine. But I just wanted to see if there's either anything about measurement or anything else a publisher needs to be thinking about in video that's different than traditional banner display advertising. Yeah, measurement is is a very complex to topic, as you know. Um, and it's become even more complex because of this mix of CTV, which is typically impression based and the traditional uh, world of linear TV, which was more around gross rating points and uh, and sex, sex and um, age demographics, um, where that's what you bought. You bought adults 18 to 49. Um, and, you know, that content audience was effectively judged on uh, that delivery was judged on how many uh, people showed up to that show. So the complexity now of, of being able to merge those two things of for, for buyers to be able to sort of um, manage their goals and, and their audience delivery um, uh, targets um, is very complicated. Then you add on um, the fact that 
TV and video has become a lot more digital like and ultimately enables more of that attribution. So beyond just did my ad deliver to the right audience, what happened then? Did we actually get some kind of um, response, especially in the in, in the digital space, right? And so attribution, I think, is now becoming a lot more, um, uh, it's, it's becoming a lot more effective uh, in the world of video. Um, going beyond just did it did the ad deliver to did the ad actually perform for me? And so I think from a publisher perspective, getting more uh, tools and more analysis uh, related to uh, performance and related to um, you know how how am I able to deliver on the goals, the ultimate goals of of my my advertising clients um, is is going to be key. Wrap that up, and I know this is a, a topic that's dear to your heart with in in yield management right and understanding did the did the ad that i just delivered did it not only meet the goals of the advertiser but was it the best possible ad that i could have uh, served against that particular impression or that particular slot and so from a publisher perspective that kind of um the triangle if you like of the advertiser goals the yield and the third piece of it being the consumer and that experience Figuring out how you optimize towards those three elements is the publisher's dilemma or is the publisher's goal, if you like. And, and so um, not easy to do um, because generally speaking, if you if you kind of move away from yourself, your client or your consumer, you're probably, um, you know, you're probably putting one of those at risk. Right. So finding the, ba the balance between the right ad to the right person in the right in the right the right time. Um, to ensure that that ex consumer experience is a good one is kind of you know part and parcel of what it's like to be a publisher in the video space today. Thank you so much, James. And uh, you're right. I ha haven't intended to get into yield management of video today, but that could absolutely be a follow up. We could find out how to do a roundtable on that, and I think it'd be a really fun topic. So, uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you for your expertise. Thank you for your energy. Uh, I will give a call out to, to anyone who's enjoying this content. Please like and subscribe. It really does make a difference. And thank you again, Mr. Rothwell. I really appreciate it. No problem, Mr. Deke. Great to talk to you.